My first memories, I guess, of this community go back to sometime mid-1990. Um, it was, I guess, sometime in the summer. And uh, just the opportunity to walk through the community and uh, mingle with youth. Um, I remember interacting with, um, at that time, a small organization that was really interested in, in, in finding ways for um, young mothers to, to come together and, and, and to provide opportunities for socialization. Um, while that was in motion, um, in one of our conversations, we you know, drifted into a, convers in, into a dialogue about how to support men in the community, um, who, who were in some cases young fathers, but um, who were not necessarily afforded the same opportunities, the same space to socialize and to, to, to have conversations about parenting. Um, so in trying to think through how to do this, we decided to organize a, an evening for the men to come out to just talk, to cook, um, play dominoes. And some of the most interesting conversations about, about parenting and about life in the community actually surfaced during those domino sessions. The client base for the Center for Community Learning and Development really is is, is anyone in the community um, who is interested in, in, in academic upgrading first and foremost um, because that is rooted in the history of the organization. We started off as a literacy organization. Um, we saw um, what we call one of the elements as lunar centeredness. We saw another element being literacy from a critical perspective in that we wanted people to be able to reflect on their situation and to think of ways to take action. And we also saw community building as, a, as, as, as important elements of that work. Um, about five years ago, we expanded that base to include um, a focus on women um, who are from diverse backgrounds, who are interested in playing a role um, in leadership development. And we particularly, um, we were very deliberate about um, focusing on women who are new, newcomer women, partly because we of a sense that in many respects, um, when we try to reflect on meaningful community building efforts, um, it seems to make sense to focus on the women. It's really hard for me just to come up with one word uh, that I can use to describe um, Regent Park or Moss Park or St. Jamestown. Um, however, what does come to mind is can-do spirit. Um, the, the challenge is often though that when we, we think of multiculturalism and we think of food very often and people from different cultures, unfortunately that's where the line, we draw the line. Um, we don't necessarily um, go beyond the, the celebration to, to actually use the opportunity to have conversations about how to, to foster um, a greater sense of community spirit. So as you probably know, we have recently changed our name to the Toronto Centre for Community Learning and Development. And that's not just a name change, but a change of, or an expansion of our vision. So I think the next five years are going to be extremely interesting. Uh, we are going to move away from just delivering literacy services or academic upgrading services to move into the area of leadership development, uh, community development, capacity building, uh, in the hopes of achieving transformational change in the neighborhood. Our goal is to see change within the community, and not just, not just little changes, but to see something fundamental, to see a transformation change at three different levels. Um, the learners and trainees at the association, at the level of uh, the agency and other community agencies, and then up to the level of the community itself. 
Um, and so our vision is an approach to look at all three of those levels and to develop the capacity of the individuals of our organization and the other organizations in the community so as to develop the capacity of the community as a whole. Now is a great time because Regent Park is undergoing a redevelopment, so it makes sense from the community perspective. Um, it makes sense because our organization has the capacity and we have the recognition that we've got the capacity to, um, to try and enact or uh, enhance this change. Learning is all about changing behavior. There are lots of things that have to change because of externalities. And, and Regent Park is no exception to that. The fact that you can't bring an ever-growing number of cars into a city like Toronto, that you, know, you have to change the design to make it natural for people to change their behavior. You, you can't force people to change their behaviors, but you can make it much more inviting for people to do things in ways that will turn out to be better for them, better for the city and not so bad for the planet. So there are always these kinds of externalities. So the, the residential neighborhood is perfectly nice, but there are much, there are bigger externalities that say you just can't stay like that forever. I think from a community level, change and transformation more than anything else is about people being able to have choices. So people being able to have the whole range of opportunities open to them and more than anything else people being able to live up to their potential. I would have to say that my experience of working with uh, newcomer communities and teaching at Seneca College, women who have been in Canada maybe for two years or so, is that there is tremendous potential in people coming from all over the world here and I think what our vision needs to be and the change that needs to happen on the ground is that all institutions large and small need to support the potential that's out there in the community. When we do our leadership training, we, one of the things we, 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 we introduced is what we call an environmental scan. And essentially what it boils down to is, every time we meet, um, people in the group, the women would have to talk about anything they've seen, they've heard, that they feel, or that they've experienced really, um, that is going that, that has an, a positive or a negative impact on the community. Which essentially means that they have to now have their eyes open. They have to listen. They have to be in sync with what's happening in the community so that they, on a daily basis for at, at, at each training session, they're able to talk about what they're seeing, hearing and feeling what, and, and, and the impact that it, it, it can have. And over a period of time, what it did to them is made them more aware of their environment and when they were asked to reflect on the benefits of doing the environmental scan that's what they all said that all of a sudden um, they just know what's happening around them whereas previously it's you know you're walking on the street you just you're totally oblivious to everything around you so it's it's really providing people with those tools which allows them, which helps to bring about a shift in how they are in the world. Um, so it's being more aware of my environment and, and having a perspective on it as opposed to just being in there and being a product of it. In order for the organizations, um, for example, currently active in Region Park to be aligned with the Region Park community life, it's, it's critical that those organizations uh, remain community-based or are community-based and community-focused. Um, it's critical that um, as one of those organizations we are constantly listening to the people to whom we are providing services um, and that uh, there's a, a communication of course is a two-way street and that we are listening to the people to whom we are providing services and um, even more than that that the community itself become the provider of services to 
for, for itself. So our thinking is that that's the very best way to give people um, or to provide for people the services they require and to create that type of transformational change, uh, to develop the leadership skills and the strength and the capacity of people in the community. Ghettoization of anything or any, any groups on any basis, to my mind, is, is a, a limiting it may solve a certain problem for a short time, but it's a very limit, limited and, and short-sighted view to, to, uh, to, to uh, anything. What's a long-sighted view? A, a long-sighted view is, is, to, is to make sure that where immigrants are going to come, and they will come to certain places because they will find fellow countrymen or, and women or whatever, but a place where they, they'll feel welcome at first. But it has to be a place where it's easy to then slowly, as you build your confidence and your skills, to, to branch out. There are, there are areas that have been, you know, wave after wave of immigrants have come in, but they were relatively easy to move out of and to get integrated further and further afield as one as one became more comfortable, more successful, and more skilled at negotiating and uh, interacting with the new, the new city that, that uh, people had adopted. Um, if, if Regent Park is providing a more porous environment where people can move in and out of all kinds of people, then it's, I think it's going to make it easier for new immigrants to uh, even moving within the community, but then moving beyond it. My impression of what the various visions are in that community uh, are that it could become a place of employment so that people both live and work in the neighborhood and I believe that that is something that the center is striving towards in their uh, immigrant women integration program so that it actually becomes a uh, program that works with women, that builds on their assets, but then has a longer reach into the community so that those women can find jobs in the community agencies that serve the park. I think in terms of uh, TCHC's vision for the whole redevelopment, I'd say it is probably a return to some of the mixed income hopes that used to uh, foster neighborhood development in Toronto, uh, but it's with a smarter, more strategic eye. The certain priority neighborhoods really is about um, a recognition that for many, many years a lot of resources um, have been put into supporting uh, the development of a social infrastructure within the city of Toronto, particularly in the downtown core. Um, but you know, really helps to support agencies such as ours and others to deliver needed social services to, to, to residents. Uh, it's a recognition that while this has been, that, that social infrastructure has been developed um, within the city, uh, the downtown core, that in a lot of the, the, the suburbs, um, in Scarborough, in, in, in North Etobicoke, uh, Jane and Finch, that um, some of that, that social infrastructure in some cases does not exist, and where it does exist, it's not supported um, to the same extent, or has not been supported historically to the same extent as the downtown core. So it's a deliberate decision on the part of, of, of funders, really, to um, target um, 13 priority neighborhoods that are essentially communities outside of the downtown core, um, where there are residents and, and people who need the same levels of support. So what we're envisioning is that in the next Hopefully over the next three years, we will actually be active in all of those communities, providing that same kind, that same level of support, that same level of training um, as we've been doing in Moss Park, Region Park and St. Jamestown. And what we are hoping is that um, part of that training would, would, would create an opportunity for those individuals to create what we are calling um, leadership learning circles in each of their communities.
When I first started volunteering as a tutor at CCLD, I was tutoring a woman from the Native community. Uh, there's still a very strong Native population in that neighborhood, but it's been, it has changed and it's diversified over the years. Some organizations get program funding and they keep on running the same program year after year for the same population. And sometimes numbers go up and sometimes numbers go down. They don't read the ethnography, if you like, of their neighborhood and translate that into programs and changes. And that's what I've seen CCLD uh, do. As just one example, uh, moving from serving the native community, which was a certain population of their literacy group, where they're now serving women who are new to Canada from a wide range of cultural backgrounds. So to go from indigenous population to newcomer population is a big shift and their programming has reflected it and I think their funding and their success has followed it. Services. The community itself become the provider of services. Learning is all about changing behavior. Potential. People being able to live up to their potential. Spirit. Can do spirit. look at the community here at Ryerson where I teach and work and work as an administrator. The, the changes here in, in the student body have been astonishing. I mean even in my short time here and I've only been here for 13 years but uh, even in that short time we've seen tremendous change in the diversity of our student population. What's been a bit more challenging and I think it's because of the time lags involved it's been more challenging to find staff and particularly faculty who also you know, represent this diversity. It's happening though. Students who come here from different ethnic and racial groups are starting to see, oh, there's some faculty are from communities like mine. When people are coming from different communities and are now part of the faculty and the staff, they're starting to share world views with all the students from everywhere that are much more diverse than they might have got 25 years ago. The, the organization formerly called East End Literacy uh, is an organization that for many years was focused very much on providing the educational tools for students to go on to to be able to participate effectively in, in higher levels of education. Students came at different levels and left at different levels but we've certainly seen quite a number of graduates of that program go on to college successfully complete programs and we've had some at Ryerson. To me that's that's uh, extremely exciting. It isn't the only thing that East End was trying to achieve. 